Hi, my schoolers, my name is Abiola, and this is my school YouTube channel. What we'll be doing right there is we'll be solving topic by topic in the subject mathematics. Alright, so we've divided these topics into various units. Okay, so for unit one, which is number numeration, we'll be solving the topic number basis. So all you just need to do is to stay with me as we move to our solution platform to solve the topic number basis. So join me as we move on. For the first unit, we have topics that have been compressed into it. That's the first unit, which is a um, number and numeration. You know? We talked about sets, that set here. We talk about sorts. We talk about indices and log reading. We talk about variations. We talk about number basis as well with some other topics. So at first, we are considering number basis in the first unit, number and numeration, the subject mathematics. So let's just have the hierarchy this way. Mathematics, the first unit, number and numeration. In the first unit, we are looking at the topic number basis. So let's get introduced to number basis properly. The introduction, what is a number base? You are talking about a counting system that uses a notation to tell you or to represent digits. Okay, this is just what I mean in simple terms. When I talk about base two, that tells you there are two different notations which include zero and one. When I say base three, that tells you about three different notations, zero, one, two, and zero, one, and two. Okay, that tells us three different notation. When I say base 10, that tells us there are 10 different notations. That is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so you can, you can notice a particular trend that for every base that we're working in, there is the highest number is minus one less than the base. Okay, so like for instance, you can see base three. You can see that the highest number is minus one less than the base. So three minus one, that is two. Two minus one, that is one. Okay, if we're working in base five, that tells you that the highest number will be four. Now let's take this for instance. If we're working in base seven, what will be the highest number or highest notation? Of course, that will be six. So that is just the brief introduction we have when it comes to number bases. I can have this as well. You know, in number base, this is how if I have this compilation. All right. Okay, this is how we read it. Not 4,321. We don't need to do that in number basis. We just say 4,321 base 8. Okay, or we can have this. This is 5,037. Whatever base I want to use, let me say base 9. Okay, so you can see all of this being put together. Then there are some recommendations that to avoid confusion because this is a, uh, the, the basis they are written as subscripts. You can see underneath. This is superscript. This is superscript. Okay, this is subscript. So you can see the basis are written as subscripts. So some recommend that instead of you using digits to represent the basis to avoid confusion with the value you are given, you can use words instead. So I can have this as 4321 base 8. And this as 50. 37 base 9. Okay, just to avoid mix up. So that is a very good introduction to number bases. So let's go into the various um, number bases that we have. I've just mentioned them. We have um, base 2, we have base 3, base 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and what have you. So base 2, you can refer to base 2 as your binary system. Okay, base 2, that is binary. All right, your base 8, that is your octal, your base 10, that is your decimal, or you can use your, or you can call it the denary. Then base 16, we have your hexadecimal. Okay, so, and of course, we can pull a linkage between base 2, base 8, and base 10. Okay, so uh, that's, that's where we look at the 4 bits, the 3 bits. Complement, but we are not going there right now. Okay, so you can see your base 2, your base 8, your base 10, base 16. Of course, there are other 
basis, but these are the important ones. And I just want us to know this. The normal addition, subtraction, division, multiplication that we do, we do them in base 10. That is why when you are trying to do some um, simple takeaway, you realize that by the time you are borrowing from the next neighbor, okay, you see that whatever thing you are adding will be added by 10. So your natural base we've been working on or working with so far is base 10. So join me as we move to the next uh, part of this topic, number basis. We are looking at the different operations that are involved or that are being engaged in number basis. So, so those operations are just like your addition, your subtraction, your multiplication, and your division. It's important to know that you can just carry these operations out just the way you used to do your regular division, multiplication, and addition. However, there are just some simple rules that you have to take note of. Okay, so when it comes to operating in addition or subtraction or multiplication, let me take for instance subtraction. If I'm asked to subtract in base 2, for instance, I have something like this. Okay. All right. So in this um, case, I can decide to use a regular way to work around this. Right? 1 minus 1, that is 0. 1 minus 0, that is 1. 1 minus 1, that is 0. Okay, I can decide to do it this way. Or I can decide to use what we know as the 1 complement and the 2 complement. Okay, 1 complement and the 2 complement. I'm going to be sharing that with you in the next video. That is where we have the full compilation. Okay, so, or I can decide to first convert this to the various... Um, representation or the various values in base 10, this to base 10, then I will now do the normal subtraction then bring the answer back to the base 2 that we are working in. Don't worry, in the next video, I will provide you with more step-by-step -step explanation. So we can decide to use this. If we are working in base 10, we can use another method. We can use in regular subtraction or regular addition. But if you are working uh, on subtraction in base 10, Instead of you using the one complement and the two complements, you'll be using the nine complements and the ten complement method. Don't worry, I will share that with you. Okay, so then we have conversion from one base to the other. So like for instance, I want to convert from, let's say I want to convert this for six, five, base seven to base 10. Okay, so I can use different method. I can use the normal expansion method or, I, or you can call it the power expansion all right so this is what i mean that will just be four times seven raised to power two plus six times seven raised to power one plus five times seven raised to power zero i know you may wonder how we have all these powers it's just very easy just introduce your knowledge of place values okay this is units tens and hundred so remember that this is 100. 100 means 10 raised to the power 2, isn't it? That is the 2 we have here. 10 means 10 raised to the power 1, then you need 10 raised to the power 0. Very easy, right? So if I have something like this, if I have, probably I have something like this, 5017678. So let me say base 9. Okay, you can see I'm very um, cautious about the base I'm introducing. See, the highest we can have should be one lesser than the base system we are using. Okay, so you can see this. So let's now identify this is unit tens, unit tens, hundred, right? Thousand. This is ten thousand, and this is hundred thousand. So you know your unit is ten raised to power zero, right? Your tens is ten raised to power one. 100 10 raised to the power 2, this 10 raised to the power 3, this 10 raised to the power 4, and this 10 raised to the power 5. So if I'm introducing or using the expansion method, what I will just do, starting with the first one, 5 times 9 raised to the power 5, right? Then this plus 0 times 9 raised to the power 4, just like that. Okay, so that is where we got all these powers that are being introduced to work on this sets of operations so that is what we'll be doing in the number system so converting from a particular base to base 10 then what about if you are moving from base 10 back to another base what do you do it's very easy trust me so if i have something like this probably 44 in base 10 remember i said the natural base we are working with is base 10 so even if i don't put base 10 just know that this 
is indicating base 10. So convert 44 to let's say base 2. So I can use this, the division method, the successive decision, uh, division, okay, if you like. All right, something like this. So I have 44 here, I have 2. 2 in 44, that is 22, remainder 0. 2 in 22, 11, remainder 0. 2 in 11, I have 5, remainder 1. 2 in 5. I have 2, remainder 1, 2 in 2, I have 1, remainder 0, 2 in 1, 0, remainder 1. Okay, you must make sure that your last quotient is 0. So if I try to power up like this, if I have my compilation, that will be 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. So that will be 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. So that is it in base 10. So you can see that we have lots of wonderful things to look at. As well, converting from a particular base to base 10, then to another base. That's what we'll be looking into as well. So I don't want you to miss out. All you just need to do is to come to the My School website by clicking on the link. We have provided a special package for you because you'll be subscribing for this wonderful package. So you don't want to miss out. So join me as you click the link and get the best of My School YouTube service.